Greetings, be my family and friends. It's a privilege and honor to come to you in your homes, your respective places of dwellings, uh, and bring you the Word of God for today. This is part two, titled Lessons from the Ark. A man fell into a pit and couldn't get out. A pessimist came along and said, things will get worse. Along came an optimist and said, things could be worse. Then came an idealist who said, the world shouldn't have pits. Finally, a realist came along and said, that is a pit. And the model of the story is this. Unless we come to terms with what's going on around us, we will not be adequately equipped to deal with the mayhem at hand and navigate our way through to a better tomorrow. The world is a scary place right now, and it's getting scarier as we enter the second week of lockdown. Things don't feel normal, and that's because they aren't. Our routines have been disrupted. We can no longer socialize. We have no idea how the world will look when all of this is over or when it will be over. From everyone you speak to, it is clear that the novelty of being at home is beginning to wear off and that people are starting to struggle emotionally. People are finding it harder to sleep, tempers are flaring and depression is on the rise. Business owners don't know if they can pay workers, suppliers, or refund customers. Self-employed people don't know if they will have any work. Workers don't know if they will get paid and if they will be able to put food on the table. The diagnosis? We are all suffering from some form of grief, individually as well as collectively as a nation and globally as the world. We are grieving for our world that has changed. We are grieving because we fear economic uncertainty. We are grieving because people are dying on a mass scale and we don't know if it will happen to us. We are grieving because we are experiencing separation anxiety from the things we once enjoyed and the people we once socialized with. All of this predisposes us to feel anticipatory grief something imminent is going to happen one of the classical symptoms of grief is denialism this can't be happening to me it is important in this time to calm ourselves and to come into the present knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world first peter chapter 5 verse 9 and one of the key strategies to surviving the pandemic is this, to live your life one day at a time. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 34, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow. Each day has enough trouble of its own. You cannot solve tomorrow's problems with today's strength. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now watch this. The Bible says one day with the Lord is as a thousand and a thousand is as one day with the lord well would you like this lockdown to feel like it's just one day the condition is this with the lord the bible says in the presence of the lord there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore the condition is with the Lord. In Psalm 91 verse 4 it says, then, you will, then he will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you shall trust and find refuge. His truth and his faithfulness shall be your shield and your buckler. Now that speaks about the mercy seat, the wings of God, because the wings of God denote the covering angels that covered the mercy seat the ark of the covenant and as they covered the mercy seat facing each other that place that they were covering with their wings was known as the mercy seat and god said to moses there i will meet with you hallelujah you see jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights according to matthew 4 and verse 2 says afterwards he was hungry 
Moses spent 40 days and 40 nights with God and it seemed like it wasn't all that long. The Young's translation of Psalm 91 says, Those that dwell habitually with the Lord. After all, we are going to spend eternity with Him. Let's get into our message this morning. Lessons from the Ark. Point number one, God didn't keep Noah from the storm, but in the storm. It is said that there are times when God calms the storms raging all around us and takes us through. But there are times when he calms the storms of fear in our hearts and takes us through the actual storm. And this is one such time that we find ourselves in right now. There's no backing out or sidestepping this one. One thing is for sure, we are all going through this one, both saved and unsaved. But for the believer, there is a word of promise from his wonderful word where he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, God doesn't only promise to accompany us in this time, but he says something very poignant to us in this time. And he says to keep us in the storms of life. Psalm 23 verse 4 says, Yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. You see, God didn't keep Daniel from the lion's den, but in the lion's den. If God had to keep Daniel from the lion's den, Daniel would not have experienced God's power and God wouldn't have had an opportunity for his glory. If on the other hand, Nebuchadnezzar spared Daniel from the, from the lion's den, Nebuchadnezzar would have got the glory. But God allowed Daniel to be taken and thrown into the lion's den so that at the end of the day, God and God alone could get the glory for it. Let us, friends, give God the opportunity in this time to derive maximum glory from the situation for his sake and his sake alone. The Bible says that Peter walked on the water, but it was only by looking unto him, by looking unto Jesus, by looking unto him that is able, by by looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible also says in Psalm 121 that the Lord is my keeper. Declare with me today, the Lord is my keeper. Romans 4 verse 20 says, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in his faith, giving glory to God. Verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he promised, he was able also to perform. Now unto him, that is able to keep you from falling and to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly in this time of great testing now unto him that is able to present you faultless before the throne of grace and glory but you might ask the question why does god allow this why does god take us through certain things well god wants to show your enemies how great he is then he wants to show you how great he is It's one thing to know that God is great, but another thing to experience his greatness. And Paul prayed this way. He says, oh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Is another reason why God allows us to go through these things and does not keep us from certain trials in life. And it's to deal with our fears. For he said, fear not. The antidote for fear is faith. And faith enables you to face your enemies. I am sure there were times when Noah must have questioned as the storms raged and the boat rocked to and fro. He must have wondered, have I put enough nails into this ark? Have I put enough tar or pitch to keep the water out? But I would have you know that it's not up to you, but up to him to keep you in the midst of the storm. Noah may have put the boat together, but God kept it from falling apart. You may be wondering, will my fate be enough against this problem of epic proportions? And the answer is yes. When you place your trust and when you place your faith in God, his faith becomes your faith. And hence we can say together, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. But God has a requirement of you. 
If you want God to be your keeper, then you must be a keeper of his word. After all, that's what covenant is all about. You uphold your end and I will uphold my end. Amen. The second lesson we learn is this. These are unusual times in which we live. These are indeed unusual times in which we live and obedience is key to our survival. Noah had to forage through the forest for gopher wood and it is said that gopher wood was extremely durable. Gopher wood was obviously incorruptible wood, perfect for the salvation of Noah and his family. And the application to us today in this time is this, we have to forage for precious promises from the word of God. We must begin to assemble and have a collection of word and promises that have been tried and tested throughout time. James 1.21 says, To receive with humility the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. Someone once said, We are strange people living in strange times. I couldn't think of anything truer right now. We cannot hope to live a normal life in what's clearly no longer normal as we know it. We are challenged right now to begin to think outside of the box. Businesses will be different right now. We cannot do business the same way we've done business before. And in the future, business will be different. It's a time to think outside of the box. Right now we are live streaming. We are using different mediums to communicate and to stay in touch. Unusual times call for unusual measures. We must adapt or die. Whilst rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, Nehemiah's men encountered an ominous threat from Sanballat and Tobias. And the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 17, And those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other hand they held a weapon. So in other words, they had to build and labor and commit themselves to the task at hand of rebuilding the wall or the walls of Jerusalem. But at the same time, they had to hold a weapon, a sword in the other hand and ward off the threat and the presence of the enemies around them. We find ourselves in a similar situation where we are still committed as builders of the kingdom of God to build the kingdom of God and to continue in that quest. But at the same time, we have to take the sword of the spirit and fend off the attack from this pandemic that is sweeping the world. Indeed, we are strange people living in strange times and unusual times call for unusual measures. Hallelujah. But in this time, I want to point out to you the sufficiency of God's grace. In unusual times, uh, God provides unusual grace as well. And we find this in the Bible in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, where God said to Paul the apostle, he said to him, my grace is sufficient for you and my power is perfected in weakness. You see, Paul's prayer was, Lord, to change my situation. But God didn't want to change his situation. God wanted to add or pour out supernatural grace upon him. And so when Paul realized this, he says, I gladly uh, uh, glory in my sufferings so that, the, so that the grace of God can be perfected in my life. Hallelujah. So in this time, we want God's grace to be perfected. We want his strength to be perfected in our weakness. And we want to experience the sufficiency of God's grace in this time. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And the key to survival is very simple. It's hear and obey. Isaiah 30 and 2 says, Your ears shall hear a word behind you. This is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the left or to the right, he promises in Psalm 32 verse 8, I will guide you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. And may I give you some advice right now, child of God. In the middle of what you don't know, remember what you do know. In the middle of what you don't know concerning coronavirus, the pathology of this disease, how it works, how it spreads, how it's carried to and fro, what will happen should you contract it. Don't concern yourself with all of the I don't knows. Simply remember what you do know. 
that the Lord is good, that God is for us, and that he is with us, and that he will keep us, and that he will sustain us. Hallelujah. Don't doubt in the dark what God has shown you in the light. We may not always understand God and his ways, but we can trust him because the Bible says, we know that all things work together for our good. And in the midst of it all, God provides us with very strong consolation through his word, says in Isaiah 59, 19. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard of protection against him. In Psalm 27, verse 5, he says, For in the time of trouble he shall hide you, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle he shall hide me, he shall set me upon a high rock. Glory be to God. And the third and final point and lesson that we learn today from Noah's Ark, it's entitled, For Such a Time as This. And we read from Esther chapter 4, the book of Esther chapter 4 verse 14. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. For such a time of this, child of God. Noah was 600 years of age when the call came to build. He was not born prior to the flood he was not born well after the flood but just before the flood i guess you can say that his birth coincided with the flood born for such a time of this you've heard it said before that we are all born with purpose and for a purpose but you may be asking yourself the question what is my purpose right now Noah had that question answered for him in full. In a moment of global crisis, God needed Noah to heed the call and to save eight souls that would repopulate the earth. In a time of national crisis, God needed Esther to respond and to save the Jewish nation. And could it be that in light of this global pandemic and disaster that is upon us, you were born for such a time as this? I want to encourage you to seek God's face earnestly in this time. It's a good time to hand in your spiritual CV for spiritual hiring. The notice has gone out in the kingdom, wanted ordinary people for extraordinary work. Ask yourself this question, child of God, what can you do for the kingdom of God or humanity at large? In conclusion, I want to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. When you are stressed, float for a while. This speaks about faith trust and resting in God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, no matter what the storm. When you are with God, there's always a rainbow waiting. May the comfort, grace and peace of God our Savior be your portion right now until Jesus himself returns to comfort you. God bless you. Amen. Lockdown does not mean we cannot celebrate those important occasions in our lives like birthdays and anniversaries. And uh, talking of birthdays, I see in the month of April we have a whole series of birthdays. Starting on the 2nd, we have Litasha Nankumar. On the 7th, Rosemary Finn. 8th, Linoy Paul. 16th, Michael Say. And on the 22nd, Riley Baxter, followed by the 26th, Devonte Jacobs, and finally on the 30th, Brother Regan Naidu. Also on the 27th, it's the anniversary of Grant and Chantel Evans-Smith. Let's not forget those important dates, birthdays, and anniversaries as well. Also, it's time for tithes and offerings, and uh, we have provided the banking details uh, for those of you who can and would like to do an electronic transfer to effect your tithes and offerings into the church's bank account. God bless you. 
In Jesus' name, amen.